It is that time, folks. The turkey hangover is over. And for many, after Thanksgiving is done, it feels like basketball season is truly in effect. And tonight, the 16th-ranked Kentucky Wildcats take on the thundering herd of Marshall. Hi, everybody. He is the shooter, Pat Bradley. I am Mike Morgan. Thank you so much for stopping by this Friday evening. So much talk about Kentucky's great start, 4-1 and one on the year. The number one recruiting class has shined, but so, too, has the oldest guy in a Kentucky That's uniform right. in one Trey Mitchell. Well, Trey Mitchell is the ideal pick-and-pop big guy. He shoots it. 41% from the three-point line. They can run the offense through him because he's such a great passer. And because he is a super senior, he's a common force. You see right there, he has the ideal stroke, and he stretches the floor from the three-point line to allow for those driving lanes for his teammates, and he can bring the opponent's bigs outside of the lane. He is coming off a performance of a lifetime against St. Joe's in which he played 41 minutes, including the overtime, 22 points, six rebounds, four assists, four blocks. He was sensational, and he is surrounded by several diaper dandies that have all played above their years and experience so far this year. Kentucky's got it first, Wildcats in white. Marshall's in black, maybe the best crowd of the season thus far here at historic Rupp Arena. Antonio Reeves, that's a good shot for him, that float. He shoots it very well, one of the best in the league. Return to center that time, a nice block. And it's by Anna Chili Killen, and there's a three. And that is right on cue. Trey Mitchell showing that, yes, the big man's got touch from outside. Well, and that's all started by DJ Wagner, a great hard dribble, always plays with his head up, knows he's going to attract that defense. He kicks it out to Trey, who loves that top of the key three. See the starting five for the thundering herd. And there is after the block on one end. The mid-range soft touch by Anna Chili Killen on the other end. Marshall out of the Sun Belt coming in two and three on the year. They have been road warriors. They have barely spent a night in their own bed back in the friendly confines of Huntington, West Virginia. And what Marshall is going to try to do defensively is switch everything. That's that's what their defensive strategy is: man to man and switch. You see two quick three ball attempts by Kentucky. That's been the story <laughs> this year for the Wildcats. And there's a three on the other end. How about Jacob Connor, the 6'10 sophomore out of Dayton, Ohio? And they can get it going. They, they haven't shut it as well this year, partly because they've been on the road all but one game this year. Piero launching the third three already for Kentucky. Comes in averaging nearly 33 point attempts a game. They only averaged 18 last season that is Dan D'Antoni the brother of course of Mark D'Antoni and Dan D'Antoni is a legend at Marshall he played there he was a leading scorer back in the late 60s he's a Marshall Hall of Famer he's a great high school coach in South Carolina of course a longtime NBA assistant with his brother Carving up space in the paint is Mitchell, then the kick out, then the baseline jumper off the mark by Edwards. Offensive rebound, though, into the hands of Edwards, and he's fouled. All that set up by the great hustle from Piero. Mike, when you watch this team this year, in every game, obviously, they get better because you have a collection of, of, of different guys coming together, but they move the ball so well. It's great activity right there by Adu Piero and uh, gets it. Big, strong move. Uh, by Justin Edwards, but watch how quickly they move the ball. The ball movement and play movement is as good as I've seen it here in years. And you have guys that know when to penetrate, how to penetrate, but they keep their head up. So when they do see that double team coming, they're kicking it out and moving around the perimeter. Uh, it, it's, it's an excellent point, and really it's the theme of this team is how well that they have handled the ball. The Assist to turnover ratio is out of this world good. That's going to be a jump ball for a defense by Fierro. The arrow will keep it in the hands of the Thundering Herd. First of all, you need a, a good decision-making team. Good job by Fierro right there. He's going straight up. Get his hands on the basketball. Pass into the corner. And Kentucky's averaging 10 steals a game this year, and that's because they're all very good, strong hands, but the hands go after the basketball, right? They're not reaching over and getting any part of the body. It's hand right on the ball. Floater off the mark by Boyles. Wagner showing the speed. That's going to be a goaltend, yep. Basket will be good. And a chilly killing on the goaltend. And, and he is 
continuing to get better. Listen, he could finish at the rim at an elite level. There have been times where he's gotten there and it's rolled around, hadn't finished. Watch him to improve that from both sides of the rim, left hand, right hand. He finishes with both. And he's going to improve on that percentage right there in front of the rim as the season goes on. Kentucky has gotten off to this start with Wagner not playing his best ball yet. Reeves has played pretty well, and it reads. Picks up the loose change and takes it all the way to the rack. That's a perfect example on that defensive possession, though. The hands are active in passing lanes. Always, always active. If you expose it, they're going to get it. Antonio Reeves, Kentucky's leading scorer, averaging over 18 points a game, gets his first basket. Marshall, they want, they, they want to shoot it as fast as they can. Not a bad shot. But they want to take, take the first one available. There's Coach Cal now in his 15th season. You and I have covered a lot of Cal practices over the years. Oh, yeah. He just seems to be in a better mood, and really, I think there's a confidence in this team and this group of freshmen that maybe hasn't quite been there the last few years. Well, this morning, I think he must have got a double Dunkin' Donuts because he was definitely talking a lot more than yes. he has in the past. <laughs> that means he's got a lot of things he's positive to talk about, though, right? And, and whether it was the assist to turnover ratio, the ability to make a three. I think the overall skill level that these freshmen have displayed is something that Cal is very excited about. Boy, another block. And a chili killing off his pogo stick. <laughs> Marshall in transition. Three spins out, tapped up in the air, and scooped up by Dillingham. Dillingham always on the aggressive. Kick out pass, Reeves never shy, buries another triple. Antonio Reeves 40% from downtown, and Kentucky is on an 8 0 run. 11 to 5, an early Wildcat spurt as we step aside. Pat Bradley back with you at Rupp Arena. We, we talked, Pat, about this new look Kentucky team and the offense. They shoot more threes. The assist to turnover ratio, the second best in the country, and we'll see a lot of this tonight. Well, you see Dillingham right there. Great penetration, still under control, even though the good ball tipped. But it's Reeves. Antonio Reeves sprints to his spot. You draw three. Thundering herd throws it up to Antonio Reeves for a three. They average, you see, 11.6 threes, but also 18 assists per game. 18 assists per game. 18 assists per game and only eight turnovers per game, which is the second fewest in all of Division I. And when I asked Coach Cal at practice today, all the, the, the threes that they're shooting, I mean, it's, it's nearly double than what they averaged a year ago. He said, well, I got the guys to do it this sure. year. The other thing, Mike, is you have to also have guys who understand how to score because if you are a shooter, and you're not playing with people who under, also can score. Mm -hmm. They don't know where you want it, when you want it, right. how you want it. And if you are a shooter, Antonio Reeves understands. Let me beat the defense down the floor. Get to the wing, get to the corner, or be the trail man. There's so many different ways to get a good look at the three-point line. It, it's not just great athletes. Kentucky always gets the yeah. best athletes in the yeah. world. Yeah. They got some skilled players. And this kid, Reed Shepard, has been a Defensive dynamo inside Mitchell with the basket. That's all started by yet another steal for Shepard. He leads the team in steals and in blocks. And to add to that, Dillingham doesn't waste any time straight into the into the teeth of the defense and then drops it off. And then a three ball on the other end tickles the twine. That's Kevon Voiles, who's their top scorer, a transfer out of Maryland Eastern Shore. And, and Voiles is a player that can do everything. He can shoot it, score from multiple ways. You're going to have to know where he is at all times on the basketball floor. The other thing is what these freshmen are going to continue to learn is you got to get your hand up before he catches it because there's a lot of quick releases in college basketball. Steal. Another steal for Shepard. 19 on the year for the freshman. How about a little 360 drawing the foul? Reed Shepard has been instant offense, instant electricity off the bench. Watch him. He's a great positioning defensively, okay? But what he also does is get great anticipation, quick, strong hands. And like I said before, he doesn't go for steals around your body and hit your body. He focuses on the basketball. The second you expose it, he's got quick enough hands and strong enough hands to tap it away. Already a memorable night for Reed Shepard. He got his Mr. Basketball ring before pregame out of North Laurel High School in London, Kentucky. 
Of course, Pops, Jeff Shepard, part of two national championship teams, and Reed Shepard already averaging double figures offensively, but I think it's the defense that has stolen the show so far for Reed Shepard. Three ball from the wing. Marshall at times will resemble Kentucky in that way. They love the three so far this season. And they're not shy at all. They've, they've got guys who can make the three. In Kentucky, that's, again, something they'll have to learn how to defend better. Now you're going to start identifying where your three-point shooters, stop ball, get out to the shooters at three-point line. Well, the last guy they hit him was Kirkman. He's their best overall shooter, although he's in a bit of a slump this year. Coach Cow in practice today was saying we have got to identify number 11. Well, now they're coming from all over the place. Two things made that. The great swing pass all the way across the court and the great ball fake. One dribble. Now you demand a double team. Kick it out for a three. Well, the thundering herd on a 6-0 run. Again, they love to shoot threes. They're now four or five from downtown. The D'Antoni family knows a thing or two about quick <laughs> transition basketball, finding open threes and shooting them. Well, he gives them the freedom to do that. So now, from a defensive standpoint, if you let up one possession, or you're not quick to your rotations, or if your man catches it and your hands are down, right? We talk about high hands, they say. Well, just get your hands up. Move on the pass. If you think you're going to move on the catch, it's too late. Right. You're going to move on. That's anticipation. Uh, the other thing, too, is you've really got to quickly figure out the guy you're defending. Where and how does his movement and what he likes to do, that's going to help you again with your anticipation. That's why I think Reed Shepard is so good, because he can figure out his opponent quickly. When he wants to cross over, where he wants to go with the ball, and then he gets his hand in there. Yeah, 19 steals already on the season for Shepard. Again, that's a guy coming off the bench. What we have just seen is kind of a microcosm of Kentucky basketball thus far. Again, we've talked about all the superlative, superlatives on offense, but they have been a little bit leaky on the defensive end. St. Joe's at times scored at will against Kentucky. He scored a lot of points in an overtime loss to the Wildcats, but they'll get help on the way. You've got three seven-footers just waiting, and we watched Aaron Bradshaw today in practice, and the seven-foot freshman phenom looked pretty good. Hoping to have him back relatively soon. And there you see them all sitting next to each other. The guy in the middle, that's Bradshaw, the highest recruited of the bunch, seven foot one out of the state of New Jersey, the number two overall recruit. And he's been battling a, a foot injury, but working out hard today in practice. And there's no definitive answer on the timetable, but you've got a big game against Miami lurking in the SEC ACC challenge. Another three hoisted up by the herd. Tapped around by the hands of Shepard. Long pass right on the money. And there, drifting for the layup is DJ Wagner. Athletic catch, great body control by Wagner. Shepard is one of the best I've seen this year. Nobody better at advancing the ball off a steal, a rebound, advancing it to whoever's running up the floor. There's a miss and a rebound by Dillingham. Always on the attack. Finds the slashing DJ Wagner and a timeout by Marshall. Dillingham and DJ Wagner. That is a heck of a combo of guards on the floor for Big Blue. Give you an idea just how quick Kentucky is off a of steal, defensive rebound. Dillingham again under control, but what he does is he waits and until Con uh, until he gets a commitment from the defender. Then he passes it off to Wagner for a strong finish. Kentucky in transition, we've seen them not only get layups, we've seen them get some threes. So that is going to be a big part of their offense moving forward this year is how quick they can get out. But they run smart. The decision making is there. And they're willing to throw the advanced pass even if you miss one or two of those, you want to keep encouraging that because that's devastating for the defense. Now there you take a look at Dillingham and, and Shepard, two talented freshmen and what they've been able to do. You throw Wagner into the mix and the numbers are off the charts good. Look at those three point percentages. Hard to ask for much better than that. And again, assist to turnover ratio, which for my, mo for my money, Pat, is one of the most crucial stats for a guard and crucial stats for a team. And here you've got a squad. What was Coach Cal so quick to tell us? Well, all the 
all the different numbers were rolling out there and talking about three-point shooting and assists and everything else. He said, let me tell you, four guys averaging over three assists on this team, that's the number I'm most proud of. Three pops out of there. Offensive rebound, though. Edwards got a piece of that one. Pinball action, and who else but Shepard picks it up. Great pass. Two quick passes. And a wide open three in the corner, answered by Justin Edwards, who's been in a little bit of a shooting slump, just 24 from behind the arc. But he buries the triple there, and the lead is up to 10. And then Edwards almost forced a turnover. Yeah, and with 12 minutes to go in the first half, we will step aside. The Wildcats, a 10-point lead over the Thundering Herd. I mentioned earlier a special moment before the game even got started. That is Reed Shepard getting his Mr. Basketball ring before the game started out of North Laurel High School in London, Kentucky. And that's a, a pretty distinguished group of players that have been able to pull in those honors. This is from our own Dickie Vitell, who back on November the 18th is watching Kentucky basketball, and he says, and I quote, to me, I said earlier, and I'll say it again, that Kentucky basketball has a genuine star in the making with Reed Shepard. This diaper dandy is a terrific all-around PT peer, just plays to win, and I hear that he is a great teammate. Well, we hear the <laughs> same thing, Dickie V, and so far, Reed Shepard right on cue. He comes off the bench, he picks up a bucket, he picks up an assist, two rebounds, two steals, right off the bat. And of course, the son of the legendary Jeff Shepard. He got two rings during his playing days, including the final four most outstanding player in 1998. That, of course, was the Tubby Smith titles team. He was a player on the 1996 national title team for Rick Pitino, and obviously all, awfully proud of what his boy's been able to do so far. No doubt I was talking to him, but played against each other in the late 90s. Uh, you lit him up here at Rupp Arena. That's, that's the word I'm hearing. Now they got the W in OT, but he did say, <laughs> I was talking to him and Stacy before the game, and he says, yeah, Reed got his defensive uh, instincts from mom. Stacy uh -huh. was a fantastic defensive player. Woo! I'll tell you what, 25 and a chili killing. He originally from Nigeria, grew up in West Virginia after that. He's put together a nice performance thus far. He came in averaging 13 points, five rebounds a game. And, and Marshall, they will go to zone uh, at times just to switch things up. This uh, baseline so, penetration so, again so, is so, Dillingham so, finding the crease, and he's so aggressive. Mike doesn't take him much space to find that driving lane. He's going to plays with the head up, make a nice pass with an easy layup. Wildcats pick it up at Dillingham. Leading the troops in the front court. They whip it around. Such a good passing team this year. Look at that. The ball never touches the floor. The shot up rims off that time for Mitchell. And, and it's not, they're not holding it for two seconds. It's one, one and a half. Okay, I don't have anything. I'm going to move it. Dillingham already with five assists in this game, by the way. Marshall continuing to fall in love with that three point shot. Here's Shepard leading it now to Dillingham. Dillingham skips it into the corner. Edwards. Up top, Wagner to Shepard to Mitchell. Great ball movement leads to another open three of Justin Edwards. We'll say what Cal said today. Justin Edwards is an extremely talented player. He can shoot the three, not the best part of his game right now. He's going to add into that. But he, he wants Justin Edwards to ease himself into that. Catch and shoot three just like that. Feet set, coming on off a nice swing of the basketball. Great matchup, uh, great few matchups tomorrow. Triple header on the SEC Network for week number 13, the final of the regular season. It'll start at noon, A&M taking on the LSU Tigers and Vandy, Tennessee, and then the nightcap, the Palmetto Bowl, Clemson Tigers, and the South Carolina Gamecocks. Of course, the big one be taking place a couple hours uh, away in Louisville, Kentucky and Louisville will go on the gridiron. Another underrated football rivalry. People associate Kentucky and Louisville as basketball schools, and they are, but they also love their college football around these parts. So that previous possession, this is obviously off of a miss. Great push of the basketball right there. Now you get a nice little floater. Previously, Kentucky 
ran off of a Marshall made free throw. I love that because if you can run, make or miss, and they still got a valuable three point open shot there. Wagner, top floor for the rebound. Whips it ahead to Shepard. Attack that. The arrow. Weaving. Kick out Wagner. Attacks the rim <laughs> and draws the foul. Now, do you see it was a direct line? The strength, the body control to get right to the rim. And if he didn't get hit, he was going to finish that. But you just saw the determination and how quickly he can get from that three point line with the threat of even shooting and making that all the way to the front of the rim. Well, DJ Wagner is going to be the answer to a trivia question before too long. He's going to be the first third generation NBA player of all time. Grandfather Milt Wagner, of course, won a national championship for Louisville in 1986. And Pops was Dewan Wagner, who played for Coach Cal at Memphis and was later drafted by the Cleveland Cavaliers. So some pretty strong bloodlines for one DJ Wagner. He's no dub. Not really a doubt where he's going to end up, right? The arrow takes some air out of the basketball on that rejection. The arrow's not a good, he's put on a little bit more weight. Uh, you know, last year, you knew he was going to, at some point, it was going to just come all together for him. Mm -hmm. And as his outside shot improves, he plays much bigger than what he is. Uh, and he, you know, he fixes things out there on the offensive defense. Nice pass inside. And drawing the foul for the thundering her. That'll be Mila Denovich, who's been active since coming off the bench for Marshall. Foul will go against 23, Jordan Burks. When the big fella comes in the game for Marshall. That's usually when they'll Go to their zone a lot more just so he's not caught on the perimeter with some pick and roll. Coming up at 7 o'clock Eastern Time on Tuesday night, you've got Notre Dame, South Carolina, Boston College, Vandy on Wednesday night at 7.15, all part of the highly anticipated ACC-SCC Men's Basketball Challenge. Of course, that comes after a 10-year stint of the SEC Big 12 Challenge. That was played in January. This event will be played in November. Easy bucket, the arrow left alone at the free throw line. And they've hit the jackpot with that free throw line against this zone. The arrow and Trey Mitchell playing it perfectly. And it's, it's important to, to be able to create a passing lane. So if you're on the wing or the corner and you're making that pass to the free throw line, you as a player, as the passer, have to understand how to create that passing lane to get it to him, whether it's a dribble right, left, ball fake. Make sure you get to that sweet spot. Their ball fired up. Shepard and Dillingham combining on the rebound. Shepard, return pass Dillingham. On a three. Beautiful work by the two freshmen playing a little two-man game on the perimeter. Easy game, isn't it? The yeah. old give and go. Who's that? Kevin McHale, Larry Bird over there? <laughs> the old give and That'll go. Work. Absolutely. It, it never fails. It's the same game, simple. It's all about decision making. I mean, if you compare this Kentucky offense to what we've seen over the last few years, Pat, the ball would sometimes stick. With all those McDonald's All Americans, you didn't have this kind of ball movement. This has been a pleasure to watch. One of the many reasons why Coach Cal is happy about this year's version of Wildcat Hoops. SEC SEC challenge that begins in earnest next week and of course this Kentucky team will take on a top 10 Miami team that is undefeated at 5-0 on the season you might remember Miami going to the final four last year Nigel Pack is back one of the best point guards in all of college basketball that should be a lot of fun to watch with those two a little bit of uh, advice on that Get your hands up on Nigel Pack. Yeah. When he's at the three-point line with the ball in his hands. Yeah, he can be deadly. There's already been some SEC ACC matchups. In fact, Patrick, I've had a chance to call two of them. A Georgia win over Wake Forest. And last week, Florida throttled Florida State. That was a bit of a statement. I'll, I'll tell you what, Coach Golden, that is a much different, much improved team in Gainesville. I think they can make a lot of noise this year in the SEC. There's no doubt he and, and uh, 
quite frankly, uh, most of the other coaches in the SEC went out and that transfer portal got exactly what they needed, some shooting, some experience, mostly is what a lot of guys were, uh, a lot of teams were looking for. Six on the shot clock to Shepard, he sees it. On a blow by Shepard, high off the window and in. Right over the six foot eight defender and a chilly killing. Well, to the value of having DJ Wagner and Reed Shepard, two of your primarily ball handlers, your ability to create at the end of the shot clock uh, and finish whether it is to finish the score or to get a shot for one of their teammates, is going to carry this team. Uh, it, it really brought the, these difficult games. Overtime, we saw that against St. Jones. DJ Wagner did it. Dillingham to Burks in the game. Back up top at Shepard. Shepard senses a mismatch. Pull up jumper. Back iron. And there's an offensive rebound provided by Fierro. Sets up the three from Reeves. So all these guys are ready. Their hands are ready. Feet are ready to catch it. Whether it is on that quick pass. Offensive rebound. Kick it back out to the three-point line. Which is a great time to get a three-point shot. Defense isn't set. The arrow has it blocked, gets it back. And then Marshall able to pick it up. Kentucky, by the way, six of nine from behind the arc. They came in shooting 40% as a team from downtown. Thundering Heard with a response. And a chilly killing. Yeah, well, he found himself wide open, and that's just the communication side of it. Want to make sure to identify the shooter. Ten points for Anacilli. Killing to lead the way, and there's Reeves. He's heating up. He's leading the way for Kentucky now. Eight, making 11 points for Reeves on three of three from behind the arc. Strong take and a nice bucket by Nate Martin. He's a transfer from Texas State. 21-point lead for Big Blue, and a missed layup at the rim that time by Burks. It just crawled off the front iron. What I liked about that offensive possession, Reed Shepard didn't walk it up, right? He's running the ball up, so now the defense doesn't have a chance to really get back and set, and then the quick ball movement, quick passes and quick decision-making, and that pass is on time on target. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it was... He, Snaked it right through the defense perfectly. He, he was robbed of what would have been yet another dime for Shepard. He already has three assists so far in this game. Dillingham on a pull up. Talked about a young man wired to score. He's second on the team with 16 points per game, and he hits them from everywhere on the floor. Yeah, well, that's going to be tough for some of those bigger guys to guard the, the perimeter plays of Kentucky Connor there. Didn't really know what to do. He, he he wanted, he needed to give Dillingham space. And Dillingham was able to shake him a little bit and just pull up. Shepard brings it up the floor. Quick shake. Nice action and an easy bucket by Mitchell. And again, threading the needle, Shepard. That is his fourth assist. I, I don't know if I've seen an inaccurate pass no, from him yet. It's almost like playing a video game. It's, he understands how to move his body in the release point to get the ball where it needs to be. Ooh. Dillingham just lulled the defender to sleep and then takes it right past him to the rack. And there's no wasted space. He's going by that man shoulder to shoulder. Direct line to the basket, which neutralizes the size of Connor. Seven points, five rebounds, six assists for Dillingham in this game in the first half as Nate Martin shows off some mid-range. Well, that's what Dillingham, when he comes into the game, his usage rate is high because he's so aggressive. Edwards, again, he has struggled from behind the arc coming into this game, but he's already three for three tonight. Yeah, they hit the backboard. Antonio Reeves, too much space against Antonio Reeves. You got to move on the pass. All he has to do, catch, step in, shoot, unlimited range. That's another three for Antonio Reeves.
story. We look forward to that. Of course, plenty of football to talk about. And, you know, with Thanksgiving week, it just feels like the unofficial start of college basketball season. Of course, everybody about five games in, but now fans are really ready to get their full serving of college basketball. Kentucky fans are ready for college basketball 365 <laughs> out of the year. We know that. But the rest of the country of takes a little time, Pat Bradley, yeah, right. to kind of get into the flow of things basketball-wise. Well, and uh, it's been a wonderful start to the season. There's been some great matchups. Some of maybe the better ones that, that I've seen. Just each tournament uh, really seems to get fortunate with some really great matchups and battles and well, it's not easy you, you go into these some of these terms and playing three games in three days yeah and that's a usually we're playing three games in a week and a half right so you learn a lot about your team in a very small time well, i think what we're learning or most of us thought before the season even started as mitchell gets an and one mitchell. trey mitchell who has been around the block for a while. He started at UMass, then went to Texas, then went to West Virginia. Bobby Huggins gets relieved of his duties. That paved the way for him to come to Lexington, and what a find he has been for Coach Cal. Well, he's a calming force, obviously, super senior, older gentleman, so now he's he's been in every situation you can be, really. Overtime games, on the road. Uh, but what I loved about that offensive possession was all five guys understood where the mismatch was. And Trey Mitchell stood his ground. You saw the ball move around to the best passer available to get it to him in that mismatch, and they accomplished it and executed it. I think a lot of teams are going to have mismatches against this Kentucky offense. And the Kentucky defense will be a little more stout when they get some of these rim protectors actually in the lineup, but of course they're not playing with any of them right now. It's Very true. a smaller team than we're used to seeing for Coach Cal and company. Part of what Kentucky will help their defense, just the communication of killing him, that spin off the glass. A little bit of the English. Yeah. Just I mean, as much he needed as he's jumping away from the rim. He is a shot creator. Not a shot in his bag of tricks that he does not possess. There's Kirkman on a three. That's what he does so well. He's got 353 career three point shots. You see Marshall's got 14 attempts right now, so they're going to put him up. Just, they haven't made that 35%, so not bad as a team right now. But Dillingham, again, watch how it's a direct line. He didn't fool around. Nice spin, knows exactly how high he has to get that release point to get it above the defender's hand. Just a creative, aggressive score. He put on 18 pounds of muscle after that trip to Canada. I mean, he's still a pretty wiry player, but he was rail thin when he arrived on campus. But for a guy his size, he's able to take it in with the trees and finish very well. Well, he's fearless, too, and he's a shot man. We've seen the creativity, just that example right there, being able to understand how the release point had to be, the spin on the basketball, and then to have all that come together at a high rate of speed with the soft touch. Dillingham will go to the bench with nine points, five rebounds, seven assists. Oh There's an and one right there. So Marshall, Marshall is scoring points. I mean, that has not been the issue in this game. They're probably going to get over 40 points in the first half here at Rupp. One thing Marshall does good, great ball fake team. You see the pump fake right there. Reed does a good job of getting out of the way initially, but Voyles is a, he's their best all-around scorer. He's got a lot of moves. Quick shifty guard out of Cape Charles, Virginia. Can't complete the three-point play. It's a 25-point lead for Kentucky, working on a 62-point first half. And they have made it look way too easy. Reeves in traffic. That's one of the few bad shots, perhaps, that Kentucky has taken in this first half. Reeves saw that he had Kirkman on him, but felt like he gets to go up on the top of him. Nice pass inside, big to big, and that'll draw the ire of Coach Calipari, who will immediately call a timeout as Nate Martin cashes in. And, and those are things that can be corrected in the film room, right? Who are we doubling? How are we doubling them? And if we do, is everyone on the same page? Because there are times where if you're on the weak side and you're unaware that there is going to be a double, you're not sliding down for help. So you see Reed Shepard has him. 
Mitchell goes on that double. Wagner, whether or not he realized they were doing that, was at the call. So all those things are fixable through communication and understanding, like, is that what we're going to do moving forward, right? right? You say, okay, we're going to double this certain opponent if he's on the right block or the left block. Is it off one dribble? One dribble, we doubled, and everybody goes to help. So those things are fixable, just going to take time in the film room and, and understanding what you want to do. And that's the thing about Kentucky basketball in November. You always see Cal's teams, because they're so young, there's going to be some mental mistakes. It's sure. like you're learning on the fly as the season is going along, and yet... The the other, Mike, the other thing, too, I want to say is defensive mm -hmm. tendency. So I played with guys where I knew what their weaknesses were defensively. So we knew when we should help them and when we shouldn't. And whether or not a guy's great on the ball defender or he could block a shot, you, you understand your teammates' defensive strengths and weaknesses, too. A rare Kentucky turnover. That's just four for the game. Again, the second fewest turnover team in college basketball. Over 300 teams. They average just eight turnovers a game. The UK got lucky there. That was Connor in the corner for a three. That's a nice example right there of understanding. You know your man is in the corner set up for three. You, you've got to be aware on that pass to move and get your hands high. Reeves up top finds Wagner on the wing. Wagner slicing, oh, dicing, and one. The hoop and the harm for DJ Wagner, who just has the ability at any time to put it into an extra gear. So he's got Trey Mitchell posting up there, but tough to get it to him, right? Because of the long arms of, of his defender, but just the, the strength, creativity, and he's very few guards that can finish with the left hand. Well, I was just gonna say, what I love, what I've seen out of Wagner this far, his ability to not only drive left, but even if you drive right, finish with the left. He's got an incredible, incredible left hand. It's almost as if it's not an off hand. Sure. And, and he's got another steal and great transition, great advance pass. Wagner again. Little Euro step action and the contact. He'll go to the line. And there, there was a discussion in the last broadcast about him finishing at the rim with his right left hand. And each game he plays, I've seen this with freshmen and top elite level freshmen one and done uh, it they it takes a couple of games to where you get comfortable finishing against the length and the strength right at the rim and he's so good though it doesn't take long for him uh, to do that so he's he's right where everyone would expect him to be now finishing at that rim I'll, th I'll throw a little uh, proposition your way he's got a chance to be the best point guard in Lexington since dot dot dot. I'll, I'll go on record and say De'Aaron Fox. Yeah, bro, there's no doubt. There's no doubt with his ability, with his speed, strength. Uh, he can shoot it. He can finish. He's got great vision. Plays with his head up. We've seen him make some fantastic passes. I think that's 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 pretty accurate. Been a lot of D Rose comparisons. Kentucky nice. on a steal, that Reeves might, on a finish. That might have been his best pass. What a way to close out the first half. This will count if it goes, it doesn't. And Coach Calipari is fired up. How about a 69-point first half? Oh, did he call a foul? Maybe that's why he's fired up. <laughs> I thought he was exuberant over the way his team finished the half with a steal, a bucket, and then a stop. And they're over there at the scorer's table, Tony Green and company. As it stands now, it's a 30-point lead going into intermission. And the first half, which saw the Wildcats shoot 65 from the field and 73% from behind the arc. That has all to do with how they move the basketball. On time, on target passes. They called that foul, and that's the landing zone area, I'm assuming. So I haven't looked at that. They're, they're not reviewing whether or not a foul was called. I assume they're reviewing whether or not it was a two or a three. Right. So that should be pretty quick. Yeah. And we're going to find out one way or another. Marshall is going to get free throws. One of the few things that Kentucky has not done right 
in this first half and Marshall should have a first half of over 40 points when it's all said and done so they would gladly take that yep. at Rupp Arena the problem has been can anybody stop this Kentucky defense which really excuse me Kentucky offense which really only has eight players right now in the rotation they don't they don't have any bigs true fives that is they're playing eight men overall and all eight seem to be contributing in a in a big way on the offensive end. No, he was on the line. I think that big toe. And as it pushes up there, my guess is that would be two. Yes, I would certainly say that. And the beauty of what Kentucky does offensively and the reason why they can't have such a high high octane offense is not one player tries to do too much. He's not a ball stopper. Doesn't sit there dribbling it for 10 seconds or 15 seconds. The ball's always moving. Defense doesn't know where the attack is coming from. And they'll make or they'll run on makes or misses. Gotcha. Okay, just got confirmation. It is a two-shot foul, and they did put 0 0.3 back on the clock, which is pretty much academic because you can't advance the ball in a college game anyway. And there is the 40th part point of the night for Marshall. By the way, the 69 points for Kentucky, the most and a half this season. And two for two for Ryan Nutter at the free throw line to make it 69-41 at the half. Now we can get you ready for the number one halftime show in America led by Dari Noka and company. Let's send it to the studio and the gang there. Oh, that young lady channeling her inner Costanza, inhaling some ice cream. Why not? Enjoy it. It's a Post famous ice cream, isn't it? <laughs> it's a very famous ice cream. Maybe they can send us some here. Welcome, everybody, back to Rupp Arena. Again, he's the shooter, Pat Bradley. I am Mike Morgan. And if you like three-point shots, you've come to the right place. Yes. Kentucky basketball has been the right place. One of the top three-point shooting teams in America. And again, Pat Bradley, they hit 8 of 11 in the first half. Yeah, and 18 assists on 26 made buckets overall. 8 for 11 from the three. All predicated on making that pass on time on target. You see Shepard and Wagner getting into the paint, kicking out for a three right there. Antonio Reeves' feet are set. Give it up, get it back. Dillingham understands that. It's a great understanding of each other, where they want the ball. And as we said before, their passes are on time. When they catch it, their feet are set. Decision making, Mike, they understand when to shoot and they understand what to attack. And we talked to Cal about that today. That's half the battle. That's half the battle. Their freshmen are not playing like freshmen. How about 69 points? A Rupp Arena record. Most points in the first half. I did not think, I did not have that on my bingo card tonight, Pat Bradley. The threes, Kentucky has hit 12 or more threes in the last three games. First time that they've done that in quite some time. The last time they did four straight games of 12 threes or more, 1989. And that's what they're embarking upon as we get ready for the second half. Kentucky a dominating performance offensively. We'll see if they will tighten things up on the defensive end. And we'll see the same eight players, no doubt, for much of the way in half number two. Inside it comes to Mitchell, and that is candy for Trey Mitchell, the 6'9", 230-pound forward out of Pittsburgh. Coach Cal said yes, we're 8 for 11 from the three, however, we're going to come out of this half and get it down to Trey Mitchell on the block. Make sure we get a good first look at it. And what happens? Execution, Mike. You could drop a ton of plays, but they executed it. And then Mitchell gets the rebound on the other end. Wagner coming off a memorable first half, 13 points, five rebounds, four assists, and he starts off with a deep two that rattles in to make it 73 to 41. Well, we've seen Dillingham, Shepard, and Wagner. They recognize when that big comes out at Marshall. Give me some space, shake him a little bit, a little step back. That'll be Fierro on the foul. The foul is on Fierro. That's his second and the team's now, first. Savir Wheeler and Oscar Shibway did a lot of good things for Kentucky. All the respect in the world. Oscar Shibway, I think I speak for a lot of people, was one of my favorite players in all of college basketball, and he's now tearing it up in the G League. But I do think 
what this lineup is able to do, there, there's a little more versatility, Pat. Sure. There's, a, there's a little more that these guards can do. And the paint is more free. There's more movement. It just seems like a better flow for Kentucky. Well, and again, talking to Coach Cal, everybody knows this. You play to your strengths. When you have the National Player of the Year in Oscar Shibuya, you want him around the basket. Mm -hmm. What that's going to cause, though, yes, is going to it's, it's going to be tight in there. Uh, now you have a big and Trey Mitchell who steps out, and you have great players who attack like Wagner, Dillingham, even Fierro. Inside out move there. That's a good three. So it's a different personnel. And Coach Cal is just trying to coach up to who he has and put them in, in the correct positions. And this year, he does have a much different type of team. And I'll, I'll say this. They're the more recruiting class in the country, okay? Mm -hmm. So you know they get skill. But what isn't given uh, enough credit to these players is their understanding of the game. It's one thing to have somebody who can make shots and dribble, but do they have good decision-making? Right. These freshmen have good decision-making skills. Right there. Wagner. Yeah. DJ has the ability to do that, but he's surveying the floor. He doesn't do that every time. There are times he's dropping that, and times he's finishing it. Now, I think you, know, you see Connor draw a foul on uh, Kentucky taking it to the hole. I think it's important to, know, important to note, and look, Paul Biancardi does as good a job as anybody evaluating high school talent. And Kentucky's got another good class coming next year. In fact, the SEC overall will have 22 of the top 100 recruits next year. That's number one in all of college basketball. They've got 20 this year. But but not all number one recruiting classes are built the same. I mean, you look at that 2020-21 team. Right. That was a great recruiting class. They didn't make it to the NCAA tournament, Pat Bradley. So, sure. so often we just assume, well, a five-star McDonald's All-American is a five-star. They're not the same. I, I, I see a difference in these young men. Well, to me, it's decision-making. And this is a mature team uh, in terms of they're, they're a, they play mature. Okay, there's a maturity level to them. And time and time again, we see it's not re, uh, analyzing and, and ranking recruits is extremely difficult. You don't know how a freshman's going to come in and how they're going to respond with the travel, playing against grown men, and everything that comes with it. Uh, so you really don't know exactly what you have till they get on campus. Right. Stop playing games and practicing. Now, you hear the term so often, basketball IQ. The basketball IQ for this year's version of Big Blue, very strong in terms of early returns as Wagner rattles another three home. He's got 20 to lead all scorers. But basketball IQ, Trey Mitchell understanding you get an advantage with a catch and pitch back to him. And that one is normally going in. That's a good shot. Great recognition by D.J. Wagner, who comes back after back-to-back -back buckets. Doesn't force it. Realizes Trey Mitchell's open. Swings it. Baseline jumper that is knocked down. That is Boyles. Also had a pretty quiet first half, just five points. He's got seven now. He's their leading scorer. And we've seen him shoot the three, get to the free throw line. Little mid-range jumper right there, so he's got a lot of offensive talent. Mitchell has it poked away. Three in transition. That's D'Antoni ball right there at its finest. Early in the first half, they were making that. Edwards with an oxygen ball. First half, he made a few of those, set his feet, well, didn't one, rush it. One thing Coach Cal keeps telling Justin Edwards, we know you can shoot threes. We need you to play bigger, sure. take it to the hole more. Well, that's the perfect example of do I drive this or do I shoot it? And it looked like he could probably had the advantage. There's only one defender to beat. Big, strong, athletic. Put that two dribbles and finish by yoking it right on him. Nice take for the basket that time. Probing the baseline is Jacob Connor, the 6'10 sophomore. It's a Marshall program that under Coach D'Antoni, back in 2018, they made it to the NCAA tournament for just the fifth time ever. And they wound up defeating Wichita State for the first pro NCAA tournament victory ever. They knocked off the Shockers as a number 13 seed. Kentucky, love and life thus far, leading it by 32.
15 seed. And how about this? You never know what kind of storyline you're going to stumble upon. This was not in any game notes that you and I looked at, Pat Bradley, but we were talking to Dan D'Antoni before the game today. And he goes, I got one for you. My coach, <laughs> when I played for Marshall, was Ellis Johnson. Ellis Johnson was the first Adolf Rupp All-American back in the 30s. He lettered in four sports areas. You don't want to mess with Ellis Johnson. Now, that, that is picture. a defensive stance. I wouldn't even want to shoot or Heck get no. anywhere near that guy. I'd it, run away from him if he was playing D on me. He, he, he's ready to shut Pat Bradley down with that stance right there. Just with his luck. If not, put you in a headlock. But he was a four Which sports legal star back, then. back in the 30s and actually coached. Dan D'Antoni. Marshall wow. basketball it does have some tradition. They were actually quite good when D'Antoni played there back in the late 60s. And he's trying to get that program back on the map in the Sun Belt Conference. They're picked middle of the pack this year. James Madison. Seems like James Madison is good at everything right now. They're picked to win the Sun Belt Conference this year. But yeah, he had some great stories about Ellis Johnson and what he was able to bring to the table. A legendary name in Kentucky folklore. And you see Marshall. Where they're predicted in the Sun Belt Conference. And, and these games are difficult for a team like Marshall, who's played four of their five games, now six on the road. Great shot by Connor. They had no hesitation. Uh, and they had shot the ball well on the road, uh, but that's just been their schedule. And they ran, obviously, into a well-rested buzzsaw. Kentucky is finding their way. Inside, loose change picked up by Jordan Burks, another freshman at a Decatur, Alabama. Great energy. That's what he needs to do. Defend, play around the rim, offensive stick backs, run the floor, block shots. That's how you earn some minutes. All balance three rims off, and here's Shepard, who had an eventful first half. First appearance here in the second half. Finds Reeves, cutting along the baseline, and that'll draw two free throws. Shepard just making all the right decisions in this game thus far. Here's a right decision to make. On Saturday, tune in to Marty and McGee. They will be uh, live at Auburn tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Eastern time talking about the Iron Bowl. Auburn taking on the Crimson Tide and trying to pull off what would be a memorable upset, to say the least. Tough loss for your Arkansas Razorbacks on the gridiron today, Patrick. Yeah, it was a tough one. It's It's been that kind of a season. Yeah. Uh, however, uh, we're just going to make our comeback story uh -huh. even that much better next year when we win it all. I like the optimism there. That is, that is why everyone loves a good uh, underdog story. <laughs> they do. But you got to set it up. See, Mike, you can't just win it all every time. No, that would be dull. That would be Not dull. Be a good exactly. Story. Nobody wants to write that script. Nah. What about uh, your Hogs basketball-wise this year? What are, what are we thinking about well, this year for Arkansas on the hardwood? Well, like many, they've got some transfers. They're a really skilled offensive team. Uh, defensively, I, they have to understand how to play together, communicate better. And uh, they, they got two good returns, Trevor Brazil and Devo Davis, which helps. You get a bunch of newcomers as well. Brazil is one of the most electric players, really, in college basketball. A tremendous athlete who's got a chance to be a first-round draft pick. How about that flat-footed block by Burks? Inside in the trees, and this time a foul as they got Mitchell reaching in. And to the free throw line will be number 21, and that is Mila Denovich. What was the, one of the things Coach Cal came to us early on. He says, hey, what's going on? I see all these schools. Villanova beats. Yeah. <laughs> wins a game, and then they come back, and they lose to Penn. And Well, a lot of it is you've got so many new faces. Right. November and December, you're going to see a lot of inconsistencies yeah. with a lot of these roster turnovers. And so it's going to take a, everybody's nearly in the same position. There's some teams who benefit FAU obviously brings back a lot from their final four team but Texas A&M benefited from bringing back the majority of their team as well they took a tough loss in their game today Dillingham Ooh. fouled in the three-pointer to boot a chance at a four-point play for Rob Dillingham 
who had his legs taken out and still drilled the triple. As a shooter, when the ball is coming from under the basket, that's why offensive rebounds thrown in out to a shooter where you're square. Your body and shoulders are still square to the rim. You got a much higher percentage of making that. And that pass from Trey Mitchell came from the free throw line, so Dillingham is already facing the rim. Time out on the floor. We will step aside with 13.34 to go. It's all big blue so far tonight. And have been blessed with incredible opportunities, and I think it's important, Pat Bradley, to give it back every now and then, pay it forward. Well, we both understand how a college athlete can impact the community that they play in, in in this state in Kentucky the state that they live in and you're a Kentucky Wildcat and that you're that for life and it affects so many people we've gotten to know the fine folks here not only Lexington folks but Kentucky the state and how much each player means to them and the one thing you want that I try to tell these guys no matter what school I visit just how um, these fans remember what you do and how you can impact the community exactly what they did yesterday. You can make a, a memory for a lifetime for several people just by taking some precious moments out of the schedule on a day off. And a friend, Mike Morgan. Who yes. couldn't use more friends? I, I know I can, certainly. That's why I hang around you. That's because right. People gravitate toward Pat Bradley. <laughs> That Until is. they hear me talk, and then they say, <laughs> what are you doing? And then they're like, where, Get are him you, out. where are you from, Security. son? Security! That is the dulcet tones of Pat Bradley. I'm Mike Morgan. Great to be with you. The day after Thanksgiving. Hope everybody had a terrific Thanksgiving. So far, it's been a great day after Thanksgiving for the Kentucky Wildcats. A rough record, 69 points in the first half probably well on their way past the century mark in this game against the thundering herd trying to improve to five and one on the season but more importantly just playing great basketball Burks has it rejected here comes Marshall wheeling dealing and drawing the foul and a chili killing the 6 8 junior the Nigerian. He's played really well. And Marshall's four. Seven of 19 from the three point line. At 37% as a team. Yeah, that's not bad. It just, oh, you would take that. It just pales in comparison to the 56% that Kentucky has shot so far in this game. And again, the Wildcats came in 40% from downtown. And they're making 12 threes a game. Well, it's fourth in Division I. And they're. Already sitting on 10 threes tonight. And, and the biggest thing for me is the averaging of 18 assists per game, second in the SEC. And if they can continue that, and as you get into league play, obviously teams are going to understand who you are more. There's more, more game tape, more preparation. It's going to be more physical. So you, it's going to be difficult to maintain that. Uh, however, They've already shown that they can do it. If they can stick with that recipe, it may not be 18 to 20 a night, um, but still, if they get that mentality going through the SEC when you're in conference play, uh, you're going to see them continue to put up big offensive numbers. Push in the back on Nate Martin brings us to immediate timeout. 12 minutes to go. Wildcats 90, Herd 55. Can't wait for more great matchups before the start. Of conference play with here before the season. Alabama with Nate Oates, kind of a new look team there. Coach uh, Oates and company really hit the portal hard. Arkansas lost a tough one to the Tar Heels. Hopefully, Tremont Mark is okay. Yeah. He was lighting it up before a scary fall where he landed right on his lower back. They had to take him out on a stretcher. And Mississippi State, uh, Mississippi State's a team to look out for as well. Uh, we understand Florida lost. A close game in the 90s to Baylor. And I think uh, Florida's improved. South Carolina's undefeated. Yes. They're vastly improved. Uh, I mean, even the the bottom third of this league is going to be a real difficult challenge for teams this year. Well, they, uh, each of those coaches did an excellent job of identifying their weaknesses in the offseason. Recruiting it, 
whether it be freshmen, but more importantly, we know you can improve drastically, improve big time in the transfer portal, yeah. but you gotta identify the right player that fits with you and what you wanna do. Because much like freshmen, we just talked about these highly recruited freshmen, not all transfers are who you think they are. Because you're only dating for about a month, by right? Now. It's not like you know before. It's like two years to get to know somebody, what kind of candy they like, and <laughs> for it, uh, you know, every every other little thing, favorite movie, favorite book, you name it. Yeah. But with the transfer, is much shorter process. It does prevent that year where you lose a bunch of guys and you know it's just simply going to be a transition year. There's nothing you can do sure. about it. Very similar to very uh, similar to the year after Coach Cal won the national title here in 2012. In the next season, they, they completely had to rebuild. You knew it wasn't going to be a, a Final Four caliber team. But now with the portal, you can plug those holes so fast and you don't have to take a major step back if you're a top 25, a top right. program. It, it's... You know, Cal is used to doing that. Coach Cal sort of, for the last however many years, that's what you like to see him be confident, step in with that, get in your range. Even though three is available, don't have to. But, Cal, you know, Coach Cal understands how to do that. Now other coaches are figuring it out. And the three teams you mentioned, Florida, Mississippi State, and South Carolina, those three coaches obviously are entering second year. Yep. So that first year transitions. Sometimes difficult. Mike White's in his second year at Georgia. I think they'll be vastly improved as well. Here's the arrow. See Thought that? about it? How about the, you know, guy stepping into a mid-range shot. That is a lost art in you, college basketball. Mike, but that gives a great hands by T.J. Wagner. Uh-oh. Little showtime, perhaps. Dillingham. He has so much body control mid-air, doesn't he? Boy, he's comfortable with that, too. Just glides to the right side of the rim. A nice soft touch with the spin. Three on the other end by Hamden Kirkman, a career 39% three-point shooter. And Dillingham, a guy who put on 18 pounds of muscle and hasn't taken away his verticality, that's for sure. How can he still be so quick putting on 18 pounds? I know, right? You and I put on 18 pounds. I could barely that's it. walk up the stairs. I can't fit in my suit. Breathing heavy. Good Probably looking. couldn't even fit in my shoes. Dillingham again. If you let Dillingham drive right, it, you might as well put two in the scorebook. Right. Well, I, I love how it's always a direct line to the basket. Uh oh. The arrow on a steal. Two on one to Wagner. The arrow making the most of his time here in this second half. Mm. Reach in foul <laughs> on Wagner. We have Dillingham. He's so quick. Head up. See how his head up is. He's always got his head up under control just in case. Now, all great passers are also great attackers because you're forcing the defense. You're attracting that defense. Then you can dish it off. If that defense doesn't come, he's obviously quick enough, explosive enough. We see him being able to finish. Dillingham out of Hickory, North Carolina, the same hometown as Tennessee head coach Rick Barnes. Hickory's produced quite a few. What a town. I mean, celebs over the you, years. You've got to be a great basketball player if you grew up in Hickory. Isn't that where who's in there? Uh, Norman Dale, of Norman course. Dale. Jimmy Chitwood. Jimmy Chitwood. Tell you what, this Kentucky team has a handful of Jimmy Chitwoods this year, it seems Good. like, the way they're shooting the three. Ten more triples this year. We did a deep dive on Hickory. How about this? So you got Dillingham, you got Rick Barnes, Madison Bumgarner, a World Series star for the Giants, Chris Washburn. Look it up, kids. Played in the NBA. Dale Jarrett of NASCAR. Ryan Suckup, a kicker, longtime kicker in the NFL. And Eric Church, I know you were listening to him on the uh, iPod on the way over here today. Oh, was I? I mean, I was early, early listener of Eric Church. Before he became mainstream. Back on cassette tapes. <laughs> I don't think I don't think he was born when they oh, were yeah. listening to cassette no. tapes. No, it was Johnny Cash. Yeah, different different guy. Same genre. Tough layup in traffic. Boy, yeah. and a chilly killing has been inventing shots tonight. He's got 18 points now, five rebounds, and he hit the deck hard. Hopefully he's okay. Maybe, maybe just a cramp here. You were doing this back in the hotel lobby after you finished your meal, I was a little embarrassed. Get a stretch it out, there's no doubt. 
That nice hard attack move. And you're right, he's been creating, inventing different ways to make buckets in this game. Good to see him back up. You know, this Marshall team, this is where the portal can work against you. Yeah. They lost two of their top players to SEC teams. Andrew Taylor went to Mississippi State, and Micah Hanluckton went to Florida. He's a seven foot one active post player that is already showing off some good returns in a Gator uniform. But if, if, if those two guys would have stayed in Huntington, who knows what kind of squad they would have in the Sun Belt this year? Yeah, Taylor was all, all league type player. Little lay in that time. Miladonovich. Shepard up top. Probing. Mid range. Pull up. Good. Too easy for Reed Shepard. And that's understanding. And everybody's in the right position. Understanding spacing, where I can get my shot. Now, Kentucky's already hit the century mark, and we still have eight minutes to go. All big blue on a Friday night post-Thanksgiving. Let's check out the good hands play brought to you by All-State Pat Bradley. Sometimes the ball never needs to touch the ground. Well, you get the double team there. You get two deflections. No Hesitation, getting the ball up the floor, advancing it yet. No dribble, Reed Shepard on time, on target. Antonio Reeves knows exactly what to do to finish above the rim. Let that be a lesson to the young players of America. Dribbling is overrated. I've gotten in a long, just recently, a long conversation with a good friend of mine who uh, also played college basketball. And he says, wow, they just do so many drills now young, as a younger age. I go, so they're dribbling more, but not better. More isn't always better. It's decision making. That's right. It's amazing. I mean, you know how many times I'd be dribbling, coach going, he'd say, Where are you going with it, son? <laughs> I was like, Okay, you're right. Just one, two dribbles. I didn't know they allowed you to dribble at Arkansas. I thought you were just well, a catch and shoot guy. That was, a, I, if I was like, in, if I was trapped, reverse dribble, uh -huh. back it up, dribble, get out of the trap, yeah, yeah, and then yeah. get it to uh, my point guard, Kareem Reed. And, He'd take off with it. I think they, they maxed you out at about three dribbles a night. That was it. And then I didn't want to dribble. No. That was not your thing. They, it, nor did I want it to be. Because I just moved, thought the ball had to let somebody dribble and find me. But just so we know, in the midst of your rather humble, self deprecating dissertation, you played at Rupp Arena a couple times. You lit it up here. Yeah, we did. We, we No, we no, no. You lit it up. Yes, yes. Come on, Pat. In our overtime <laughs> loss to Reed Shepard's dad, Jeff, in their national championship team. You put Jeff in the cookbook, didn't you? <laughs> That's right. I didn't want to remind him that everything's going so well for him and his family. <laughs> Wagner right Reed between the eyes of the Wagner. defender. And another three for Kentucky. That's the second one for Wagner, who's got a game-high 28 points tonight. And as a group, as a unit, they all understand what shot needs to be taken on the offensive end. Mike, there may have been one or two possessions that you look back and you say, okay, maybe that wasn't the best shot for this offensive set. But outside of maybe just two shots, all of them have been the best shot available to take on that possession. You think about the one loss they had. First off, they scored a ton of points against Kansas on a neutral floor. They Look had none of their big guys. Shepard wide open. But the extra pass. Easy. You have, not only do you have a paint touch, kick out extra pass. By the way, that's four consecutive games for Kentucky with 12 threes or more. That is the first time Kentucky has pulled that off since 1989. 1989, the last time Kentucky had four straight games with a dozen threes. All right, paint touch right there, still under control. Reed Shepard, quick pass. Antonio, uh, excuse me, DJ Wagner moving his feet. Antonio not in the paint, but draws a double and just the quick ball movement. Reed Shepard understands how to get farther, far, far, far enough away from the defense to where nobody can recover. You got to go back to that Kansas game 
for a moment. It, there was really a lot of positives to come out of that game. Again, you, you got three seven footers, including the number two recruit in the country and Aaron Bradshaw, who, who wasn't able to play and hasn't been able to play. So, you know, you, you're going up against one of the best sure. post guys in America and you're playing under size, and yet they still were able to get to the rim, score, and Antonio Reeves has been terrific for the most part this year. He went cold at the wrong time. They wind up losing the game that they led late. But and for the most part, there's been very little to nitpick about what this team has done, really uh, on the offensive end specifically, but I would say on both ends through what is about to be six games complete. I would say when you look at what you want to improve, rebounding. Yep. But you got 21.3 feet <laughs> yeah. just sitting on the bench right now. Right. OK, so that's going to be an automatic. Uh, Reed Shepard is your second uh, leading shot blocker. Mm -hmm. So, you know, at your six three point guy probably is is sort of crafty and, uh, you know, that will improve. So you're rebounding rim protection uh, will improve. And, and those are the types of things you want to improve. And the second thing is, and this just comes with as we talked about watching game film, getting game, uh, getting the film room, is communication defensively. Are, how are we playing this pick and roll? Are we going under the pick and roll? Are we going over the pick and roll? Who's our personnel that we're playing against? Are we switching this? So those types of things are gonna improve, certainly getting out to three-point shooters. I think the best advice I got from uh, my AAU coach, the great Leo Capel, Another three. Yeah. Another three. He 13 said 13 on the game. If you don't learn anything in your transition from high school to college, the number one thing is defend the three. When you get there as a freshman, learn how to defend the three. And uh, uh, just a lot of high school players don't understand that, and they have to learn how to do that when they get on campus. Well, speaking of which, Marshall is 8 for 23 from distance so far in this game. Look at the ball movement. Look at another wide open three. And another make for Reeves. Too easy for Antonio Reeves, who lives for that kind of open look from behind the arc. He's got 23. Great paint touch again. DJ Wagner can get to the paint anytime he wants. Antonio Reeves, feet set, on time, on target with that catch. But even Antonio understood where to go to make himself available for that pass. It's like you watch a player and you're like, how's he always, how is he always open? How's he getting open? Well, the, the shooter understands how to move to create that passing lane so that he is always open. Spacing, right? One of the most underrated spacing. parts of offensive basketball. Even the spacing, a little V cut, a backdoor cut, understanding what space on the floor that to need to be on. If you want to get shots off, you're going to understand how to get open. And there's a variety of ways. And you know what one of them isn't? Just standing. Yeah. Just standing. Any defense wants to play against somebody who just stands there. And there's been very little just standing there in the offense for Kentucky tonight. And they started off like gangbusters. Constant movement, setting up open looks inside, outside. Coach Cal will tell you he he likes threes, but he loves layups, and Kentucky's had their fair share of those as well. And if I could add to that, because this is the most important part of that, it's moving with a purpose. Mm -hmm. You see these guys move with a purpose, right? Yeah, they'll stand there if they have to, but they're moving to get open. Rare miss that time. Reeves had another open look. He's now 5 for 7 from downtown. 23 points for Reeves, 28 for Wagner, and 16 for Dillingham. It's been another balanced effort by this Kentucky squad that on any given night there's four or five different guys that can lead the team in scoring. Just a couple games ago Reed Shepard had 25 points to lead the way off the bench against Stonehill. He had a night for the ages 25 points seven assists two blocks three steals not bad. Connor read that crossover, credit to him. That's not easy to get your hand in there against Robert Dillingham. He was able to do it, just timing and, and read it. Another good assist to turnover game for Kentucky. 26 assists, seven turnovers. Again, they came in 
with a ratio of almost two and a half to one, which is for college basketball is exceptional. You can't ask for much better than that. They have picked up that trend once again tonight. Of course, Kentucky's got some big ones coming up. Miami, North Carolina at a conference. And then a 18-game conference grind in what will be another loaded SEC. I, I, I would say a good target would be eight, nine teams in the big dance. And I, I think when you and I are doing games in March, there'll be more than that still fighting for a bid. Reeves tried to throw that one cross court in traffic and a rare miscue. As we approach the four minute mark of this game, all Kentucky tonight. And a timeout on the floor with 3.51 to go. Some of the legends that have come through Lexington. Maybe we're looking at a couple future ones here tonight. Hunter and 12 to 75, our score. A whole lot of players that have lit it up tonight for Kentucky, but none have been better, Pat Bradley, than one freshman by the name of DJ Wagner. Well, he's shot the ball really well tonight, but I've been so impressed with his ability to get in the paint, finish. We've seen that with either hand right there, just coming downhill. We really know we're going to stop. There's nobody better than him getting downhill and finishing up at the rim in America. But also, he's under control enough to know when to distri distribute the basketball as well. Five assists, zero turnovers to go along with those 28 points from DJ Wagner. Wagner, the freshman out of Camden, New Jersey. We talked about the legacy with his father and grandfather and more does he look like he's going to be something special this year in college basketball. And, and to add to it, too, he's, he's got those active hands defensively, right? And he's quick enough, strong enough, laterally moves well enough to stay in front of the ball handler, but he's always looking to get his hand on the ball, deflections, uh, and just be a nuisance. A stick back that time by the guy who's been the biggest bright spot for Marshall tonight and a chilly killing but now has 20 points to go along with six rebounds. I guess I can't emphasize enough, Mike, with all the offensive talent, Wagner, Dillingham, Reed, Antonio Reeves, the willingness to be passers, Trey Mitchell. I mean, these guys also have within them the understanding that I'm, maybe I could get a tough bucket on my own, but I'm not going to. I'm going to make that turn that good shot into a great shot or, or average shot into a good shot. That last play is somewhat significant because this year in college basketball, there's a point of emphasis. You're going to see more block fouls than charges. But when you have a complete run over like the last play on Wagner, that's going to still be a charge. But when you see secondary defenders kind of coming in after a guy goes airborne, it's going to be a lot harder to get an offensive foul called on that. I've always felt it just, I, I used to call it the play of control foul. It, you know, yeah. you used to see guys just put their shoulder down and try to bully and, and just truck drive through people. Right. To me, that, that's that's an offensive foul. Absolutely. But if somebody's making an honest move and somebody happens to slide in, to me, that's got to go to the off. Uh, uh, they, foul called on the defense. Yeah, for years and years that would drive me crazy. A, a guy would commit what would be labeled a player control foul and just lower that shoulder and plow against the guy. Inevitably, there's somebody who's like, well, he didn't have his feet set. Well, if you just run over a guy and <laughs> truck him, he doesn't have to have his feet set. It's still an offensive foul. Oh, no. That time it just squirted out of the hands of Connor. That's another deflection for Reed Shepard. We're trying to calculate all the deflections oh, from Kentucky players. Yeah, I've lost count. They're, they're ball hawks, man. Shepard on a triple. How about that? Just when he shows off some more defense, he reminds you he's got a pretty pure jumper as well. 12 points now for Shepard. Ball's tips, no back court violation. Ooh, almost a steal. And then a slam on the other end. 
115 to 79. And the shots that they have taken are, are off a couple of passes, so they're smooth, clean looking, high percentage shots. And yes, DJ Wagner and his ability and Dillingham and their ability to be so quick and explosive make tough shots look, look easy sometimes. Dillingham, a shake and bake, step back jumper off the mark. Joey Hart is in the game, so for one of the rare times this year, Kentucky will go to a ninth player in the game. Shepard collects another rebound, finds Hart. Good crowd imploring Hart to shoot the basketball. Well, Joey he, Hart, a freshman guard out of Indiana. He understands the assist rate on this team. Mm -hmm. He understands he's going to get a pat on the back more for dropping a, a dime to one of his teammates and taking a step back three. Well, it's another three to one assist to turnover night for this Kentucky squad. There's Hart. We know he can leap. He showed it off earlier in the season at Big Blue Madness. Hundred and fifteen points now for Kentucky that ties the most points in the Cal era tying the number set against Arizona State back in 2016 I have a feeling that's going to be broken very quickly. Dillingham between the legs and a block foul called on Marshall with seven seconds remaining on the shot clock. So a trip to the free throw line for Rob Dillingham. 16 points, five rebounds, eight assists for that freshman. And more of the backups coming in here. Under a minute to go for Kentucky. That includes Walker Horn, the son of the former South Carolina basketball coach, Darren Horn, who's now the head coach at Northern Kentucky. Brennan Canada, who's granted another year. He's a great story how he is stuck it out here in Lexington. Certainly would have played more if he went other places, but decided this is where he wanted to be. So now here's the question. Are these guys going to want to take chances? <laughs> Are they going to want to try to thread the needle? Are they going to want to go for a steal? I think they're going to want to launch three. a shot. They're going to launch it. Okay, I think. I think they're going to pull it up. They got 20 seconds. I think they're going to try to run a little bit of offense here. I don't think anybody's going to over dribble. No. Nope. Oh. Now everyone still tucking in their shirt. I mean, if you're a walk on and you <laughs> get an open three in this case, you got to you got to fire. You know the best part of what we just saw? Every one of them came in and had a tuck in their jersey. Tuck in the jersey. Is yeah. it? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Swing it. Look here at that. Go. Everyone touching the basketball. I love it. Watkins up. Here we go. Hard on a three. Why not? Why not? Joey Hart been sitting on the bench for 39 minutes, and he hits a triple for Kentucky. That's 16 for the Wildcats, and that's the most points in a game under Coach Cal. Ball movement, Mike. <laughs> Sharing the basketball. Let's see if we can get another one. Not a lot of sense of urgency right now. Does Walker Horn pull the trigger on one? He's showing off his dribbling skills yeah, right now. Coach Cal said, "Let's Pretty fancy." Call the dogs off. Now, say what you want about Marshall and you know how their season might go the rest of the way. This is impressive what Kentucky did here tonight. I mean, you score 118 on 61 percent shooting, 59 from three. A three to one assist to turnover ratio. A lot to like about what this team has been able to do through a half a dozen games. And this is blowout city tonight. 118 to 82. This is a team, Pat Bradley, preseason number 16 in America. That's the lowest preseason ranking of any Coach Cal team at Kentucky. I, I think some people want to amend that report <laughs> the more they watch this squad play. And we haven't even seen the tall timber, as you mentioned, over 21 feet in length. And hasn't been able to play yet. Well, that's amazing is the unselfishness of these extremely talented players, the maturity of the freshmen that have come in, decision making. Like, we can throw out the statistics, but 
that stuff comes from somewhere and it's their understanding of the game and again their unselfishness to make the extra pass uh, where the, the talent that they have you can just see it now our player of the game who we hope to hook up with here momentarily is DJ Wagner the final stat line on Wagner 28 points on 10 of 14 from the field five assists in 26 minutes of work and DJ Wagner will join us now one of the many talented freshmen on this Kentucky squad DJ we were just talking about how much fun it is to watch you guys run that offense how much fun is it to play in it for you uh, it's very fun you know just being out there with that great group of guys you know it's a lot easier for all of us you know because everybody can play so at any moment somebody gonna make a crazy play or somebody gonna make a good play because everybody can play the right way and like coach always say everybody can shoot pass and dribble so we just like to run we just like to have fun like y'all said so the level of unselfishness you guys are the number one recruiting class coming in yeah and you had two guys you know transfers what was the discussion and how did coach Cal get you guys to buy into that unselfishness making the extra pass to get a better shot uh really just coming from uh practice and just all of us being competitors you know all of us having confidence in each other to shoot the ball when somebody don't shoot the ball when they open we tell them to shoot so i say just come from confidence and just being in the gym so much together we see how good everybody is and how much ability have everybody has to be a good player so we just all trust each other and like you said it's, it's a lot funner that way you know playing unselfish it's a lot easier it make the game come a lot easier to us dj let, let us in the locker room a little bit and talk about off the floor the chemistry with you and all your teammates because again in college basketball you don't have that much time to gel and get to know one another i know you had the canada trip that was big but right. what is the chemistry like in the locker room with you guys uh you know we like family you know off the court we we go out with each other we, we with each other most of the time you know so we like a family i feel like that shows on the court you know we are brothers and we like to play for each other but off the court we have a lot of fun with each other and a lot of them as well you know we like to play around joke around a lot but you know once we step on the court you know it means business but off the court we like a family well dj there was nothing joking about your game tonight simply fantastic 28 points on 10 of 14 shooting five assists just one turnover yes, congratulations on a great performance and yes, another sir. kentucky win thank you i appreciate that you got it yes, dj sir. wagner player of the game we had a lot of candidates as kentucky rolls up 118 points and the wildcats improved to five and one now on the season they'll get ready for miami and another sec acc showdown should be a lot of fun next week with that first annual event that's going to do it for us for my partner pat bradley and our terrific sec network crew this is mike morgan saying so long from rough arena kentucky wins it big enjoy the rest of your thanksgiving weekend